are yet again. Yep, episode 57, three away from the big 6-0. And man, Ethan just showed me the Mortal Kombat trailer. Dude. Dude. Pretty good. Pretty uh, pretty good. Dude, for a video game movie, man, like, I love the old Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah. I do. Like, it's I'm, so good. I, I like the old Mortal Kombat. But, I mean, think about it. That's 1990s graphic. Oh, yeah. Like, it, was, it, it, it still holds up a little bit. It, it, it does hold up. You know, it's just cheesy enough to be great. Exactly. Right? Um, even if you watch it now, it's like, it's, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I see that. Yeah. But, dude, this, with the CGI <laughs> and, and the way you can film movies now and the, the actors, dude, there, it's going to be awesome. Something to note, there's only like two or three actors in this. That I recognize of name, yeah, yeah. right. And it's it's the guy that plays Scorpion, mm-hmm. who's he's an Asian actor. He's in a lot of action movies. Yeah, I don't know him. Yeah, uh, but I think the guy that plays Shang Tsung, mm-hmm. the uh, the old wizard dude. Yep. Uh, sadly, it's not the original guy that's been playing him for you know thirty odd years now. Right. But uh, I think that that other guy that they've got for Shang Tsung looks great. Dude, it, it looks great. It comes out in like a month. It's the uh... it's the sixteenth of April. So okay. just over two months, okay. or just under two months. So, okay, so we get we get uh, Kong and Godzilla. Have you seen the second trailer for that? Oh, there's a second trailer. <laughs> yes, there's a second trailer. Oh man, <laughs> yep, there's a second trailer, bro. If anybody knows, it's Marcus. Oh, Trust me, that kid, dude. He's watched King Kong. Like I think the last time I, I said it might have been a million times. This, uh, no lie, dude. It's every day he's watched King Kong. Jeez. Multiple times. He is at that age where you just watch the same thing over and over. Yeah. And, and, know, and that's fine. Like, literally, so he'll watch a movie or a show and then just look at me and be like, play it again. Just play that. I just want to see it play again. it again. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, no, no, just start over. Just from just, the beginning. Just replay just Run it. it back. It's fine. And he just plays <laughs> with his toys and watches TV. But I mean, anyways, yeah. Good times. Jeez. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. Like, every time I see that trailer, it it, it is a Red Band trailer, which... Good, yeah. <laughs> For a Mortal Kombat movie, right? It needed to be a red band trailer because I need to, I need to see everything. What's a red band trailer? A red band trailer just means that it probably wouldn't be shown to any audiences outside of like a red uh, uh, an R rated film. Ah. Uh, so like trailers for R rated films are usually a little bit more edge. Yeah. Closer to the edge, they they still usually hold it hold like back. Holding the heart. Yeah. yeah. Holding the heart, cutting off the arms, like the, the blood spike. That's letting you know, get ready. Yeah. It and of course, again, it's Mortal Kombat, the game that literally started the video games are violent. Yeah. Argument. So, yeah, a red band trailer for a Mortal Kombat movie, absolutely needed. I love the fact that these people know exactly what you want to see in a trailer. Because they always put it last. Oh, yeah. Like, the thing that everyone wanted to see out of this whole thing was Scorpion say, get over here. Exactly. Like, that's, it. that's literally what everyone wanted to see. They they want to hear Sub... Uh, sub or see Sub-Zero just make ice and kick people's ass. Yeah. And they want to hear and see Scorpion just say, get over here. Yep. That's all they want. Pretty much. And then and then you, you get the added benefit of seeing Liu Kang do his finisher. Uh, that's one of his... I don't know how much you know, but... That's one of his fatalities. Yeah. Is the uh, like the movement with the flames and the dragon. Yep. Super cool. Yep. Um, a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of the stuff in this trailer seems like ripe for me to just pick apart. Like you see reptile, it looks like a reptile. Right. Which was one of the roughest parts about the original uh, like '90s Marvel mm. Combat. Right. Was the the reptile graphics. Yeah. But I think they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna land it this time. Oh yeah. I would hope so. Yeah. Um. But no, all of the all of the scenes with Sub Zero and all the ice and stuff, it it just looks good. It doesn't look fake. The scene where he goes to shoot the gun, Sub Zero grabs oh, the barrel gosh. of the gun, and like the bullet starts to come through, but the ice catches it. Oh, then he rips gosh. his arms off. Dude, it's fantastic! It again, this this trailer. These people know what people want. Yeah. They know how to make a trailer. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I, I saw enough to make me say, I am going to watch yeah, it. Yeah, don't show me everything, but show me everything I want to see. Exactly. To make me want to go watch it. Of course. And it's going to be on HBO and in theaters. Yeah, so... so again, we're, we're to that weird point in COVID. Yeah, so I've got HBO. So here's the, here's my thing. 
I think I want to see King Kong and Godzilla in theaters. Oh, it's an IMAX movie for sure. I think I want to see Mortal Kombat in theaters. Really? Yeah. I'm not I'm not too set on uh, seeing it in theaters. Let me tell you why. <laughs> the sound system and the darkness of the room. Like, I want to go see it when there's not a lot of people there. Okay. Which probably won't be hard. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be terribly hard. Do you can rent movie theaters right now for like 200 bucks? Yeah. Just just the whole theater. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a thing. I, I've been I've been telling friends, like, we need to just all go in, like, maybe $25 for a group. Yeah. And just run out of theater. Do, do, a, uh, do your own showing of one of these movies. Exactly. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if you could bring in your own movie. Because, I mean, a lot of projectors nowadays are just DVDs. Yeah. So <laughs> I wonder if you could just bring in, like, a random movie and just be like, we're just going to watch this. Is that all right? Yeah, that's a good question. So if you work at a movie theater and a new movie comes out, like a hot new movie, like a Star Wars yeah, or something like that, is it a DVD? So from what I've heard from friends that work in, in the uh, theater business, um, a lot of times they will literally get movies on day of release. They, it is, <laughs> some of them really stress out because it's just like, Where's the where's the movie? We need like five of them because we've got six movies playing tonight, and five of them are this movie. <laughs> we need this movie, um, and a lot of times for little lesser movies, maybe like Kong or Mortal Kombat or something, they'll get it maybe like a couple days in advance. A lot of people will end up getting you know private screens just because they have it. They're open late. They just stay in the theater and watch it. So. So perks to working at a movie theater, huh? Well, that uh, aside from the uh, impending loss of your job, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but I mean, if you like own, like, if you like are the manager of the movie theater, still impending loss of your job. But I, I do see where you're going. Well, h- how do you know? <laughs> I mean, if you watch it, what's wrong with it? Eh, well, no, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, the <laughs> I don't know how, uh, how excited I would be to be working in a movie theater right now. Yeah, I guess so. Not many people there. Yeah. Um, All of last year, basically not having a job. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But. Here's the unemployment, though. Hey. Yep. It was going pretty good. Thank God Joe Biden decided to side with the Democrats and uh, do that $50,000 student loan forgiveness. Oh, wait. <laughs> Let's not get into it. Let's not get into he it. He didn't. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been keeping up with everything. I don't know. Isn't about you. that isn't that what he ran on? Didn't he run? He, he ran on a few things that he uh, yeah, immediately yeah. has gone uh, gone against. But you know, that's what happens with every president, is what I've heard <laughs> lately. Is just like except for Trump. Eh, well, he pretty much tried. He 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 at least tried everything he tried. He, he, everything he promised. Yep. And a lot of the stuff like the wall, for example, you can't just build a wall at the southern border. You've got to be able to see through. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, he tried. Well, here's another thing. No one got on board with the wall, or it would have gotten built. Exactly. If everyone would be like, hey, you know what? Let's build a wall. It would have been a great wall. <laughs> it's the great the wall of the United wall. States. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been the greatest wall. It would have been better than that. The best wall. The best wall. The be- <laughs> yeah. A Trump wall. <laughs> but that's the problem. Nobody wants to agree. No. Um, and they still don't. So. Did you see the – I don't – we might need to fact check this. Because I'm very interested in this. Okay. The uh, the governor from Florida, DeSantis. DeSantis, yes. Please tell me it is a fact that he told President Biden to go F himself <laughs> in a letter. So, we don't know for sure. The 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 rumors are that Biden was telling him, you know, we're going to restrict movement through Florida if you don't lock it back down. Yeah. And DeSantis basically was just like... Oh no, we're doing fine. So uh, we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing, and uh, we're gonna keep using our rights as a state to do as we please. Yeah. And uh, yeah, basically go f yourself. Well, I, he said something along the lines of like, "You will address me as Mr. President or President or Biden." President yep. Biden. And he said, "No, I will not. You can go yeah. f yourself." Essentially, and that that just seems like I'm sure that happened with Trump too. Just like. Trump having butting heads with certain governors, senators, whatever may have you. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's not like it's a big deal, but. <laughs> oh, I love it. DeSantis, I, I think DeSantis may be one of the best governors currently. 
Yeah. Because you also have governors like uh, Cuomo. Who? Who? He's got some uh, some explaining who, who, to do. Who has some explaining to do? We're not going to go into it, but he is currently being investigated by the FBI. Yeah. Uh, that's that's where we'll end it because uh, I don't know how YouTube likes talking about it. So. What about facts? Ah, uh, well, you remember facts over feelings, except if it's facts over truth. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We like truth over facts around here. I just like opinions. <laughs> So, Everyone's got one. Yep. So uh, I'm looking through Snopes. I can't really trust anymore. But um, Is it, that said, the fact that you can't trust a fact checking source. Well, here's the thing. A lot of places nowadays that are quote unquote fact checking will say something along the line. Like, say back when Trump was in, you know, Trump, uh, Trump saved uh, a bunch of puppies from a burning building while wearing gym shoes. Then they'll say, false, Trump did not save a house of, uh, a bunch of puppies from a burning house while wearing gym shoes. He was wearing slacks and mm. loafers. Gotcha. Like, th- th- they will say, like, the way Snopes is set up in a lot of fact-checking websites is just a big red hexagon sign that says, false. Right. This is not true. But you got to read into it. But you got to read it. You got to read the fine print. And they will have the fine print, so they legally aren't you know, culpable. But right. it's a lot of times when you look at, I mean, it's just the mainstream media doing the mainstream media things mm-hmm. of twisting something so that on the offset, it looks how they want it to. But in reality, it's, it's pretty plain. And hey, simple. did you see that one article that the, that Australian news outlet put out today on Facebook? There's no, I didn't see any of those. Why not? Uh, well, you know, Facebook is being Facebook. Big tech is uh, being a little dystopian. A little bit. A little bit. And it's, uh, yeah, if, if you don't know, there was a shot across the bow today with Facebook in Australia. Uh, Facebook basically just said, uh, well, actually, to really get to the heart of this, Australia passed legislation saying that Google and Facebook, big tech, if you post a site in your like Google News, Facebook News part. That is you publishing a link. Pretty much the headline and the, the main juice. Exactly. So if they're going to use that to get clicks on their website, it either has to go straight to the website that they're linking to, or they have to pay those news sites money. Now, I am kind of 50-50 on both sides because... It seems like just a cash grab from the news sites to just get money. Yeah. But also, you do have to understand like these tech sites like Google and Facebook that aggregate these uh, aggregate these articles and stuff don't necessarily like <laughs> they're basically getting the ad revenue because they'll put the article up but then have their own ads over it or whatever. Yeah. Instead of the news site getting the money, they're getting the money. So it is kind of scummy because they're not putting in the work. They're just scraping. I think they call it scrape, like digital scraping yeah. of these articles just to get the articles to give to people that are searching for it. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a lot of technical, like specific stuff that uh, that I, even I, I'm not very well versed on. But all that said, you know, it's because Australia passed this. Facebook basically just said, Okay, nobody gets to post news. Yeah, like the publishers can't post news. The uh, emergency sites can't post news. The news channels can't post news. And if you are just a civilian and go find this article and try to share this article, you also can't post the news. Yep. And I find that very concerning. Yeah. Because it's a, it's an American company doing this to. Another country. Isn't that called war? Well, if it wasn't, if it was a country doing it to another country, absolutely. If this was America doing it to China, if this was China doing it to anybody, if this was, if this was Brazil doing it to Argentina, yeah, it would be an act of basically war. I don't mm. want to go too far with that, but it's aggression. <laughs> it's it's emotional. It, it's literally taking information away from people. 
Yeah. And in a, in the age of the internet, that is the that is the next step in warfare. You don't have to shoot people. You just got to make sure they don't hear news. This, it's kind of like Australia having one huge newspaper, and a well, and Facebook walking over and setting them on fire. Exactly. It's it's again, it's stifling the transfer of information, yeah. and it's it's concerning. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily something Facebook was going to hold on to. It's not like they're going to do this and never let it go. They're basically just doing it so that Australia backs down. Yeah, it's, it's, a, an, it's a loophole. It's it's an act of aggression. It's just saying, hey, we have this power. Don't let don't make us do it again. Yeah, it's a little bit of a mob tactic. Going to be honest with you. Yeah, a little bit. The best weapon is one you only have to fire once. Yep. So think about that. I can I can see that. And and again, like I don't necessarily agree with Australia putting legislation out there that kind of helps these mainstream media sources that don't really need that much money. Like if if you're failing as a news site, maybe there's a reason. Yeah. However, the the part that gets really weird and sh- kind of shitty is that um because articles just in in their entirety were blocked. That meant, like you mentioned, emergency people, um, just a bunch of different things that are important outside of news yeah. also got blocked. Alerts. Alerts for wildfires. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if that happened in Texas right now. People on their phones wouldn't be able to see, like, oh, you will not have power for the next 48 hours. Yeah. When it's already been 72. Right. <laughs> like, these, these are things that Thankfully, Australia isn't going through another brush fire. But if they were and this happened, somebody needs to be culpable. Like, somebody needs to, like, go to jail for this. Yeah. Like, that's... and I don't know if they broke any laws. I don't know if Facebook actually did anything necessarily legally wrong. But this is wrong. <laughs> like... I love the comparison to the railroad back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, the some small towns depended on the railroad stopping there for them to either make money or to gather supplies or to build things and ship them or yeah. whatever it might be. They, people and they would, would just make, skip. People would make money. Be, that, that's the whole reason, like, towns started in the West was because it happened to be on a rail line. They needed, you know, the rail line can only go X amount of miles before it needs to refuel for coal. This place happens to have coal, and it's you know within that range, so they stopped, and then people stopped there when they were riding the train because they were like, "Eh, I don't need to go all the way to, you know, Los Angeles or whatever it was called back then. Yeah, I, I could stop here in Tombstone, Salt Lake City, or something like that. Tombstone, <laughs> Tombstone. Did Tombstone have a railway? I don't know, but it sounds it good. Did. Tombstone, Arizona. <laughs> Either way, like there are places along the rail line that people would stop and just say. Eh, I got my bags, my little hack sack of nothing that right. I carry on my back. I'm going to just stop here. I'm going to build a house. Well, the rail line is here. I might as well start working on, you know, mining coal. Yep. Okay, I've, I've got coal. I just got to sell it to the railway. Oh, the railway isn't coming anymore? How am I going to live? Yeah. <laughs> like. Go kill people. <sighs> Well, yes, <laughs> that was that was the uh, was, yeah, the eventuality the yeah. in the West was if people didn't have uh, jobs or the ability to make a living, they decided to uh, do criminal activities. Yeah. Um, Makes... not, not saying anything, not not comparing it to uh, modern times. Let me tell you something. If there, here's how I'd have lived in the Wild West. If there's 30 people in a town, and I know only five of them are getting paid, and whoever's getting paid the most stays at his house by himself at all. I'm going to jump and kill him take all of his money. Yeah. Ba-boo. It's the Wild West. Yeah, Wild West. <laughs> I'm going to grow a sick mustache. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No beards. Beards were weird back then. Yeah, it'd be a, a very nice mustache with stubble all around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't... Come to think of it, like, beards seem to be more of a modern thing. Like, it, they dropped out of, like, wearability for a while in human history, and then they came back. Yeah, they were kind of big in the seventies, right? Yeah, and then uh, they kind of went away. Well, I'm just saying, oh. in like the the expansive, you know, yeah. historical record, like yeah. you you think of Vikings, you're like, oh, beards. But you think of the Greeks, like maybe some of them had beards if they were super old. But like Spartans, 
we're told to shave most of the time. Right. Like just to keep it clean. Yeah. I don't know. So it's weird. Anyway, <laughs> that's a total weird topic. We, should do, we need to do a beard history. Beard history. Beard history. I mean, it should be like drunk history where we dress up <laughs> and we just start yeah. talking about people with beards. Yep. It'd be great. Fantastic. Um, what else happened this week? Anything cool? <sighs> Not really. <laughs> uh, well, cool. Uh, a little bit cold. I mean, it's oh, freaking dude. freezing everywhere. <sighs> Let's talk about that. So, okay. Transportation during Corona for me was okay. I do logistics. People know this if you listen to this. Um, so never slowed down. Actually had my best year ever last year. So there was that. The I haven't had an issue yet, right? I haven't had any problems. So I have shipping locations out of Texas, out of Mississippi, out of Kentucky, out of Indiana, and out of Missouri. And out of Pennsylvania. Those are like some of my major shipping locations. And I have shipping locations out of Virginia, out of Georgia, out of Florida, out of the, like Indiana, Ohio, all that stuff that go into Texas and that go into Jackson, Mississippi, right? Mm -hmm. Well, every single one of those places has been shut down this week. (laughs) I mean, dude, it has been a shit show. I'm like, Many of loads shut down. Yeah, like, I can imagine. Like um, this is like was having a good having a good month up until Monday. Yeah, and then everything has went to a halt. So like we haven't like one of my places in Mississippi opens back up tomorrow, finally, and the Texas place might open up on Saturday, but we don't know probably next week. It's just been like a whole week and nothing. I mean, yeah, like the, literally America froze for a couple days. Yeah. Maybe a week. Like, Zero degrees. Crazy. Zero degrees in Texas. In Texas. In on the coast of Texas, there was snow by the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Literally. Global warming though, right? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> Climate change is is the like the new topic. It's not, because not global warming is not global. real. Yeah. And and we've talked about this. I firmly believe like humans are changing the world a little bit Mm -hmm. like there's no way you can tell me all of these cars running 24 7 like all of these cars aren't putting gases into the air that are changing the the climate right you can't like uh, i'm just practical about it yeah now the fact that we're currently america like the the earth is going back into an ice age may or may not be true yeah. But scientifically, we've gone in and out of ice ages for literally as long as the earth has been around. Right. We're currently back into an ice age and it's going to be an ice age for thousands of years. Right. Hundreds of years maybe at the least, especially if global warming is a thing. Yeah. Um but no, it's it's it is a little concerning, especially over the last, you know, 5, 10 years, the more and more like crazy weather is getting. Yeah. Like you you see all these movies like King Kong, like Godzilla for example, like the earth is fighting back. Yeah. <laughs> like that it does kind of feel that way a little bit. Nature is taking its course. Here's like wh- if you knock nature off balance, nature's going to hit you back. Here's where I'm at. There's been terrible weather forever. Well, yes. Like it's cold all the time somewhere. Agreed. 1993, 1993, 96, 97. Yeah. It's all, it was worse. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're looking to micro. We need to look at macro. Yeah. Just like, and, and you also have to keep in mind, like recorded human history is so small yeah. compared to the entirety of the earth, let alone the universe. Yeah. You idiots. <laughs> yeah. This place is like a bunch of millions of years of old. Like we're, uh, I think we're sitting at thirty-four million when the universe is like thirty-something billion years old. The Earth is a fraction of that, and humans alone are a fraction of that. Yeah. And then recorded history for humans is a fraction of that. And what you guys call recorded history? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, like it, it's crazy to think like the last Neanderthals died out. Well, some of them, I think they still exist. I'm looking at you, Gunner. I've got, got a little bit got, in there. Got a little bit in you. There's a little bit in there. <laughs> Look at that beard. Um, There's only one explanation. 
Neanderthal monkeys. Yep. yep. But um, no, like uh, Neanderthals died out X amount of years ago, and that like since then recorded history was another million years later. It's crazy. It's yeah. Fascinating. Very fascinating. You know, I was listening to a Rogan show <laughs> the other day. We haven't I, talked about Rogan a lot. I still listen. Um, I do too. I, I was listening to the Elon Musk from uh, last week. Yeah, that's a great one. Dude. Do such a great I show. Can, I can tell you a lot about like what I've been feeling today as I've listened to it. Yeah? Yeah. From, c- c- continue your, your point though. I can't remember which one it was. I went down a like a little rabbit hole of like uh, Rogan when he was super stoned. Like it was like videos of literally like Rogan too high, like <laughs> just going on rants. And there was one where he was talking about the uh, like kind of like the, our ancestors, like ancient history. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, he was talking about he got real high and he goes, uh, "So I wonder." <laughs> I wonder which monkey was the first one to kill another monkey and rip their their face off and put it on their face to like mess with the other monkeys and then realize, oh, this is warm, so I need to start killing more monkeys, taking all their like their fur and their skin off and putting it on me and making clothes out of it. Like, yeah. I wonder which was the first monkey to do that, or what was the first monkey to grab a stick and stab a fish and yeah. be like. So, oh. so that's a good that's a good thing to talk about because currently we're looking at chimpanzees and some of the smaller apes, and they're in their Stone Age. Yeah, like they're starting to use like we've already we've already seen them use tools. Yeah, but they don't use them consistently. Right, like they'll use a stick and just like get bugs out and whatnot. Yeah. But these guys are making their own tools. Ooh. They're spear fishing. They're doing a lot of things that we would see in early humans. Yeah. Uh, early homo sapiens. Cause human, like that's the weird thing when you think about humanity Yeah, is although some people don't believe in evolution, no. I, I particularly kind of believe in it sort of with everything sort of kind of mm-hmm. that's, that's my motto sort of kind of, yeah. um, early humans, there was a, the first guy to be like, Stick, Ha-ha. stick, stab, stab fish, yep. eat fish. Yep. I mean, what else could I make? <laughs> what else can I make? And, and uh, I mean, there are many milestones yeah. in human evolution. The first one was more than likely st- like fashioning uh, wooden tools mm-hmm. and then stone tools. With stone tools, they kind of estimate that either stone tools came first and then fire or fire came first and then stone tools. I mean, it's it's sort of in the same yeah. category of like early human, uh, and then the wheel, um, alongside the wheel. You the Sumerians. Have... What? The Sumerians <laughs> did the wheel, bro. Yeah, but like uh, with with the wheel, you also have agriculture, mm-hmm. which we probably had agriculture for a long time before the wheel. Yeah. Um, and then after the wheel, you get uh, bronze, um, smelting, yeah, fire mm-hmm. with. Metal makes better metal. Yeah. Instead of a lumpy bronze, you get tin. You add tin, you get steel. Right. Or, or a very basic ki- kind not, of steel. I know what you're saying, yeah. Iron. Uh, but <laughs> all of that to say, it's just, it's very weird when you think about, we only live like 80 years. Before, I mean, even 80 years ago, life expectancy was half that, yeah. maybe. If you die at 90 from COVID... <laughs> I'm the problem. God damn it. I hate you. Just saying, bro. <laughs> Trying to have you, a philosophical point. But if you just... die of 90 from a COVID vaccine, definitely not that. <laughs> it's definitely, definitely just old that. age. Old age, man. You just croaked. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> geez. Uh, but no, speaking about the, uh, the Elon Musk episode, Sweet. I love that when Joe asks him, like, how can we terraform Mars? Elon is just like, oh, you just raise the temperature a couple degrees Celsius. And it makes sense. Like, I mean, even here, a couple degrees Celsius is the difference between frozen water and, you know, water. Yeah. So on Mars, that's the difference between frozen carbon dioxide and water versus liquid carbon dioxide. Well, gaseous uh, carbon dioxide and yeah. water. And carbon, literally... 
just melting the ice caps on Mars would create an atmosphere within the next probably 100 years. Which is crazy. What's also crazy is the idea that a lot of people have of melting those ice caps and warming up the planet. Which is just nuking it. Yep. <laughs> Elon specifically says making two miniature suns at the poles. Yep. Which is just thermal nuclear detonation and, you know, reactions. Yeah. Which is what a nuclear explosion is, but man, <laughs> if that's not the most American thing ever, how are we going to heat this thing? Let's blow it up. Let's blow it up. Biggest bomb we got. Yeah. What's the, give it to them. Give it to two of them. <laughs> We're going to hit it from the top and from the bottom. We're going to meet like in the J- middle. It's going to be Japan all over again. Yep. Oof. Hey, wow. Mars, welcome to Japan. <laughs> We're going to serve you Habashi. <laughs> habashi. Uh, no, I just find it very interesting. I, I'm kind of getting back into just like researching science. Um, like we here recently, we just had a superconductor that can be operated at room temperature. Yeah. I feel like you may not know what I'm doing. I have no clue what you're talking about. So a superconductor is basically something that uh, <laughs> a lot of people, when they think of superconductors, they can they think of something like floating over something frozen. Yeah, that's because like to get a ther- uh, superconductive uh, material to activate, you have to keep it cooled below mm. freezing or mm. right at freezing. Okay, um, which creates a magnetic field, which would then obviously conducts electricity very Keeping well. Keeping it frozen, you have to keep it very very cold. It's it's. <laughs> And the way that this uh, room temperature superconductor works is basically you put two pieces of metal super, super close to each other so that the atoms are almost touching. Mm-hmm. And there's a force that pushes on them that we we Can't may see. have a... We, no, no, we may or may not have like a, a name for it, but there's literally a force that will bring them together because there's a vacuum that's caused... Well. All this has to be in a vacuum, by the way. Okay. But in the vacuum, two pieces of metal, certain certain kinds of metal, obviously, that are super close to each other, the there's no air in there to buffer them apart from each other, so they bring are charged towards each other. There's some, it's probably magnets or something. Yeah. It's over my head, but I'm trying to. Whatever allows the photons and the electrons to jump on over and make some things. That's the thing, because they're so close to close together photons have trouble getting out so they get, become more energized or something like that it's it's really weird but it's really cool most <laughs> of the stuff that elon musk talks about is extremely weird. Like, dude like okay so when you listen to and if you haven't listened to an elon musk joe rogan podcast which i believe there's three now there's three you need to listen to all of them and then you need to ask yourself why you're so dumb like that like that, that should be the question that everyone like you should listen to those podcasts Listen to his answers. Listen to the time between his answers. And then be like, why am I so dumb? Because that's exactly how I feel after I get done listening to his podcast. Have you noticed something about Elon Musk? He doesn't talk fast. He he is very... He he is... English is his second language. You can tell. Like, yeah. It's just... He, he is South African. Um, But he he is... I was telling friends about this. It was just like... There may be a lot of things that me and you may not like about Elon Musk if we found out, because everyone's got their skeletons. Sure. But like on the offset, I'm not that upset that Elon Musk is the richest person in the world right now. No. So I am a huge Elon Musk fan. As you should be. Yeah. Um, Again, like uh, like the cobalt and lithium mines. That's the stuff that I may not agree totally on. Yeah. But the fact that the guy wants to get to Mars and he has said verbatim, I want to die on Mars. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, again, I'm I'm optimistic about the future. I love when Joe goes, so Elon, like, what's the time frame are you thinking of, like, you know, <laughs> starting these uh, commercialized trips to orbit? Two years. And he's like, mm, yeah, uh, I work a lot. So, I don't know, two to three years? Something like that, give or take. It's crazy that he is working on a starship. And yeah. it's even crazier that he says that we could have a t- starship readily usable, like an airplane, within two years. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. When the rockets are still exploding on re-entry. Yeah, and he goes, I expect them to explode. 
They should explode right now. Yeah, because they're testing at like thousands of yeah. percentage of degrees higher than Normal. what's on paper. Right. Like this is this is stress testing of yes. all magnitude. Right. Uh, he goes. They should. Bl- they should blow up. That's what they. If expect. they he goes. If they don't blow up, there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that I, mean, I don't know, man. Like, there's people like him that are actually like it, doing something good that people are going to talk about a long time from now. Like Elon yes. Musk is going to be known for a very long time. Bezos could be known for like his business, and unless his little space company get, blows up too, but like he needs to start doing some more space stuff. He's going to be Here, known. Here's forever. my thing. I wish that we had. I I don't want ten more Elon Musk's, but I wish that. Sorry, I wish that the ten most richest people in the world would all be more like Elon Musk and in just their own field. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like Jeff Bezos, who's just like, you know, it'd be really nice to go into space, but what about the bottom of the ocean? Yeah. Because we still don't know anything about the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Because we can't see it all. Right. And it's fascinating to me that we just don't care. And we don't have the technology to even get down there yet. Well, we do. Only a few people have been to the like close to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, but it's still not the bottom. Right. And there's st- like that's the weird part about the bottom of the ocean is that even though you could get like to the bottom, you're only seeing 30 feet in front of you in all directions. Yeah. Before literally light can't go any further. Right. Like that's it's both terrifying. Yes. But also intriguing. Here's a question. Would you rather be safe in both instances, but would you rather be floating in space away from the spaceship in your spacesuit? But totally like tethered safe? No, no, no. I'm saying like you're floating out by yourself. Like you're gone. Okay. Bro. Like you're just. Float. If I had to choose how to way to die. Yeah. Like you're floating <laughs> in space or. You got the same suit on except for underwater, and it's all pressurized and stuff. Like it's not going, you're not going to blow up at the bottom of the ocean, which you might. But you, well, you yeah. see, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. The the technology has advanced at this point to where you're not going to die immediately if you get out into the water and start floating at the bottom of the ocean at the very bottom. <sighs> what would you? In no light, like you only have a headlamp. Jesus, uh, I would probably rather be in space. Yeah. Uh, even though what you by the standards you have set, I will die in space. I would much rather do that than be exposed at the bottom of the ocean. Better question. You're in space. I love these what if games. <laughs> we need to play more of these. You're in space and you're floating back towards Earth and you're gonna hit orbit. God. You're coming back into the atmosphere. Oh, you're coming God. in hot. So you're gonna burn up a little bit, all right? And it's gonna be a slow death. Okay, it's probably not going to be, but let's just keep it like that for fun. Or you're at the bottom of the ocean, and there's still dinosaurs down there. Jesus, and I don't know what type of dinosaur it is, but it's kind of like a crocodile that lives at the bottom of the ocean. But it's bioluminescent. Yeah, it's definitely bioluminescent. And it's kind of like the megalodon. Ooh. And you're just floating towards it, and its mouth is open. <laughs> Here's my thing. <laughs> I would rather burn up on reentry. Yeah, than then, be at then, the bottom then. of the ocean, man. There is. Here's the thing. We've been talking about it for a long time. We need to do it. There is a game called Subnautica. Yeah. It's literally like you're you're on a spaceship. The spaceship crash lands on a water planet. Mm. You don't know where anything is, but you all you see is water. Yeah. Good luck. It's it's a survival game, and I wish uh, you need to play it because it's it's very fun, but it is also one of those games that unlocks hidden fears in Mm -hmm. your body yeah and it unlocked a fear for me of just deep water yeah because there there are moments it's an open world survival game so you don't really have like checkpoints that you're looking to get to right there are things that happen when you get to certain objectives yeah um to survive but uh there was a moment for me where i didn't know that the map was like pre-generated i thought it was like randomly generated Mm mm-hmm but there's a there's a certain scene that you can um, like that you can find that you're literally standing on the edge of one of the reefs and it's just nothing but darkness in front of you and it's terrifying. I and again, I would rather burn up on reentry than deal with anything that's below the surface of the water. Yeah. I feel very weak in the water and I am a good swimmer. Yeah. I'm an excellent swimmer. I used to swim daily. Right. 
But whatever's down there is more capable than I am, and yes. it's obviously survived long enough to get that big. Yeah. So it's definitely going to kill me in like two to three attacks. Yeah. Like it's gonna chomp me once, bur- burst open my soup, open my suit, just rip me out of there and bite me again. I'm dead. Yeah, I love it. But yeah. if I'm in space, burning up on reentry, I can at least turn around and look down at the majesty of this blue marble floating in the sky and just be like, well, it wasn't be- flat. <laughs> it wasn't flat. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I just hit the dome. <laughs> <laughs> I was dreaming. Bounce off. Oh, Not even on fire. Uh, what What would be interesting would be the the over under on surviving that, because yeah. like we had that guy that was with Red Bull, right? Yeah, he floated up in a balloon, basically into the space into space. So something interesting again, science on the brain right now. He wasn't necessarily in space. He was at the edge of the atmosphere. Yes. Which is crazy. It, it it fascinates me that there is so much air above us until there's no air. Yeah. But the part where the air gets unbreathable is still like only three quarters of the way up. I know. It's crazy. No, wild. And that's still like a thousand times higher than the, the tallest mountain. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. But that guy survived, right? <laughs> So if I'm burning up on reentry, I'm sure I could figure out a way to survive. Now, do I have a parachute? Absolutely not. But people, well, I mean, you, you hit have ter- a trampoline at the bottom. You hit ter- you, listen. You hit terminal velocity at some point. You you can only get hurt so much. Yeah. You can't go any faster. Right. And people have died for less, and people have survived for more. So yeah. I mean, it's definitely something to think about. Hopefully, think, it doesn't happen. I think the human body can. S- Human body hits terminal velocity at about three or four miles up or something like that. Like that's as fast you're going? Yeah. Terminal velocity is just how fast one thing can fall in Earth's gravity. So, I mean, if I hit terminal velocity super early and I'm just falling, I'm probably not going to get hurt too hurt. Would you ever go skydiving? I've thought about it. There are plenty of reasons for me not to. Mm-hmm. One, my scare, my my fear of heights. Yeah. Um, even being in a plane, I've only been in a plane like a handful of times. Remind me of plane. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> been in a plane a handful of times here, like in my life, um, and they were all before I was ten. So I haven't been in a plane recently. I probably don't have as much of a fear of flying as I do of heights, because because of heights, it's just like. Oh, I'm in a high place. I could literally just fall from where I am right now. Yeah. But I trust science enough. Planes fly. They most fly the every day. Yeah, most of the time. Until they hit something. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean. Until there's a terrorist. Whew. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I, may, I may not look like it, but I feel like I could take down a terrorist. <laughs> All right. Oh, I would give it my best <laughs> shot. Listen, if, if it's if it's either fighting to, to the death with his one or two guys on a plane. In a box cutter. In a box cutter. Get out of here, bro. Or crashing in a plane. Yep. My chances of survival are very high for one of those, and yep. it's not crashing. You better carve me up like a Thanksgiving turkey yeah, if you, you got better. a box cutter. Listen, I, I've seen box cutters do work, but I feel like my hands could do better work. All right. Listen, I would break your arm and stick that box cutter up the terrace. That I, I'd be one of those guys that like he he slices me with the box cutter, and I just hold it and I just keep slicing myself as I like yeah. take him down. I envision myself as like <laughs> the perfect mixture of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and The Rock in every action movie they've ever been in, <laughs> in any scenario that might mean life or death for me or my family. Yeah, like that's how I feel like I'd come out. See, I feel like a lot of things like. Real life isn't an action movie, but I feel like it it goes both ways. Like, there are only a handful of times where a plane has been hijacked. Yeah. 9-11, three, what is it, three times? Mm -hmm. And then uh, over in Seattle at some point. I don't don't remember what it's called. It's like a D. Baker or something like that, where he hijacks a plane, gets a ramp. D.B. Cooper. Yeah, that's what it is. Like, it's only happened a handful of times, and I wonder how many times it's been attempted. Let's talk about that. We don't hear about it. D.B. Cooper. So, here's the thing. I've been doing a lot of research on a lot of uh, American, like, it's been science, 
we're paranormal slash superstitious slash supernatural stuff. I got another one for you too. Keep going. <sighs> because Plain Hotel. Keep going. Plain Hotel. Wow. Are we planning something? No. <laughs> but I just that, that's two things I got to talk about. All right. Well, uh, Loki, the new Disney Plus show. Yeah. There, the breakdown of that trailer is huge because one, it's DB Cooper. Really? Yeah. The the <laughs> there is a scene in that trailer that's just like, oh, Loki is now DB Cooper. Uh-huh. And he gets away. Um, there's also uh, Polybius. I don't know if you've ever heard of that one. Not, no. Okay. No. Um, and there's also the uh, the Seder Square. Okay. Give, give me a brief rundown on Polybius and the Seder Square. Polybius is a arcade game from the 70s to the 80s that happened to show up. Or uh, allegedly. All this is, you know, superstitious rumors, you know, all that stuff uh, from Seattle. Uh, or at least the Portland, Washington area. Um, and this evidently this game was like, it showed up and it was super fun. And then black, uh, black suited men with sunglasses started showing up, taking stuff out of it. And the only records that have ever been shown of Polybius existing have it like being connected to this Russian game network or something like that. Okay, I'll, I'll dig into it. Now, what's the other one? And then the Seder Square, if you saw Tenet, yeah. the Seder Square evidently has something. I still haven't seen Tenet. I just, so it's like kind of like time type of... It's something, something that showed up in, like I think, Pompeii and other places. And it it's, it's some kind of clip, cryptograph. That Is it like the volcano place, Pompeii? Yes, Pompeii, Pompeii. All right. But it's just like, it's, it's just like a four by four square with letters or numbers in it, or okay. letters in it. That we've just never cracked. Okay. And we don't know the reason for it. And it was like a decently carved thing. So it's just like, it has, it has some meaning to somebody. Yeah. But we literally, we literally just don't know what it is. Have you been on Netflix at all in the past two weeks? I don't have Netflix. So no. Okay. So no, <laughs> you need to get it and you need to watch the, the hotel Cecil. What? Oh man. What is this? So there's this hotel in LA. Yeah. And it's in the middle of Skid Row. I may already know about this. I'm sure you know a little bit about it. So I guess I was, listen, in the mid, in the 2000s, 2000, in the 2010s, um, I played sports and I wrestled. Didn't do too much, like, keeping up with the news. So, pardon me. However. (gasps) Oh, it's this. Yeah, the Cecil Hotel. It's the disappearance of this girl from Canada. This Asian girl from Canada comes to this hotel. And the only footage of her after she goes missing is this elevator footage that is like chopped up and stuff and very sketchy and gets out to all these people on the internet. And then everyone's trying to like solve this case with the detectives during the middle of this hepatitis C breakout in the middle of los angeles i feel like i heard like they found her in like the water tower the water tower yeah yeah so there's a movie that is very similar to this that came out in like 2000 and like five or something yeah where there's this young girl who's getting chased by these people in this hotel yeah. and she ends up going up to the water tower and like drowning, trying to hide from these people. Yeah. Very similar story to this, except this one's real. Happened in 2013. Not too long ago. 2013? 2013. I could have sworn this was like early 2000s. No, 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 no. 2013, wow. not too long ago. That's freaky. <laughs> yeah. Um. So they had like the the general manager of the hotel from that time on the, on the show talking yeah. about it. The head maintenance guy on the show. The three of the like eighteen lead detectives on the case, um, and then like five leaders of different online communities because YouTube was just blowing up at the time. Yeah. So there was all these YouTubers that literally made their YouTube mark and became YouTubers based off of trying to help solve this case of uh, Eliza Eliza something or something. So check this out. Then you got the conspiracy people who uh, that's the ones I'm all about. They're like trying to go conspiracy into it. The timestamp doesn't match on the footage they released there. You can tell the footage has been cut or slowed down in some instances. So they go after the detectives like through their, their reddits and their YouTube community and all this stuff. And the detectives have to end up come out and saying that like, 
well, we may have doctored up to 60 seconds of this footage before we put it out. We slowed it down at times so that you could actually see if anybody could notice who this was or anything. That's like, believable. It, 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 very believable, but also kind of sketchy at times. Yeah. Like, like, not sure why we did we did all 60 seconds, but, you know, sometimes when you release footage, you want to slow it down so people can see certain Makes things. Sense. So don't look into it too crazy. That's right? where you get me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me not to look into yeah. something. I'm so, going to look into it. Yes. And and then there was another thing. So there was a hepatitis C breakout in Skid Row, which Skid Row is the homeless community of yeah. Los Angeles. You know, the thousands of people. Literally, if they release you from jail and you don't have anywhere to go, they drop you off in Skid Row. Yeah. Right. Um, so anyways, they there was a hepatitis C breakout. And they were trying to uh, contain it, supposedly. But they also think that this Eliza girl was in the hepatitis. I think it was hepatitis C. It might have been something else. But in the hepatitis uh, department of some college in Canada. What? And that she might have had the disease and spread it to everyone that would have been receiving water out of that water tower. Jesus. So when she died, was sitting in the water tower for 19 days or however long it was. Good God. Like people in that hotel and in the surrounding area were drinking, showering, washing dishes <laughs> in that water, which was brown, reported brown by people yeah, yeah, that yeah. were staying I, there. I've heard the story, yeah. Um, and then one of the studies or the... Uh, the the vaccine or whatever they gave for the people for the hepatitis C or what whatever some type of disease I think it's hepatitis C okay anyways was named Eliza whatever named the person's name flip flopped like instead of first name last name it was the last name first name treatment so they Why? think she I uh, dude <laughs> th they they think that the conspiracy people think that she was like some type of an agent or working for some type of a department and was sent over here to um i don't know poison people in that area poison the water room? i don't know that was one <laughs> of the conspiracies but, but what about the planes oh planes so i turned 30 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. on uh tuesday tuesday, tuesday. Yeah, yeah. so happy birthday to me cool. um and tia you know how this weekend I was like, hey, we're doing Valentine's Day. Yeah. We're going to get it, whatever. So our plans was to do Valentine's Day on Friday because she's got to work Sunday, right? Yeah. So Friday gets here. We've got reservations to go eat at Food Works downtown. Cool. Marcus is going to be with us, so it's going to be us three. Go down there. So I get off work. Uh, flowers. Chocolate-covered strawberries. Do the thing, you know, bring it home. And then we laid it on the couch for a little bit because our reservations are for 8 o'clock. A little yeah. late. Not sure why we did 8 o'clock, but I let her do it, so it is what it is. <laughs> so I'm laying down on the couch. I pretty much fall asleep. About 7 o'clock comes around. She goes, hey, um, you just want to like change your shirt or something? Never tells me to change my shirt. Okay? I was like, uh, yeah, sure, I'll change my shirt. I'll just put another shirt on. Though. I'm not changing anything else. I'm just going like a bum. She's like, all right, that's cool. About 7.30 gets there. Knock on the door. <laughs> Who's at the door? Well, it's my best friend. Yeah, it's my best friend Bailey and her her uh, husband Matt. They've came in from South Carolina. Hey, she surprised me. I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool." They surprised me. Here's Bailey. So we end up leaving. We go down to Food Works. We get there. Tia's kind of acting a little sketchy. I still haven't caught on to this whole situation yet. Of course not. And uh, we walk in, and the lady at the front is like, hey, is this for the big party? I'm like, big party? What big, big party? party? Whoa! <laughs> it was a surprise. <laughs> it was a surprise party. She had all my friends from college, all my teammates, all my all my buddies awesome, there, awesome. and the whole family there. So big old shindig, that was awesome. Went out that night, and then um, she told me that night that she got me a trip for my birthday. So we're going to Big Sky, Montana, and we're leaving next week. So we're Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, come back Sunday. Going to be in Big Sky, Montana. Good lord. Yeah, man. So there's the plane trip. There's, awesome. there's where the plane came from. So I'm super excited about that. I've, <laughs> the only out west I've been, I went to Nebraska, played football, came right back home. Nebraska's pretty okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's nothing special. It's pretty yeah, okay. Yeah. But <laughs> so, I mean, to go out, I've been wanting to go out west. and I've been meaning to as well. Uh, 
I'm talking to a girl, and this was my uh, Valentine's Day plans. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, I was going to tell you about it. Uh, we, it, It's just this girl that I've talked to on and off for probably a year now or so. Yeah. Nothing serious. We were just friends. But it was just like, oh, right now, both of us are pretty pretty open. Yeah. And just single. Just like, yeah, well, we'll talk. Yeah. Figure it out. Right. See if it goes anywhere. Yeah. But uh, she lives in Utah. And she sends me pictures of, like, going up on a cliff o- looking over oh. Salt Lake City. Yeah. Yeah, not pictures like that. No. Although, well, well, we'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she, Off camera. She, uh, she goes to this cliff that she has that is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Off in on a ridge. It's it's like going up to, you Point know, look up. Yeah, yeah. Just someplace random that not a lot of people know about, but it has an overlook of the entire city. Mm. And it's 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 Utah. Yeah. It's big sky country. All yeah. of that over there. And it's just open air. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And like I I've lived in Iowa, which also has pretty, you know, it's it's open sky. Right. But it's not big sky. Yeah. Like there's a there's a certain difference. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the amount of clouds in the air or something. Yeah. I don't know. But like seeing pictures of Iowa rolling hills that you can see all across. Yeah. But then you get to Utah and Big Sky where it's flatland mm. and then the occasional mountain. Mm. Oh my god. Dude, I'm super fired up by Montana. Dude, I can imagine. So we're flying into Bozeman, which is about an hour away from Big Sky. Okay. There's like a Big Sky resort. We're staying at the bottom, I guess, and going to go up yeah. and do whatever. Like I th- The only thing we have planned is snowmobiles. That's awesome. going to be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm over a bored kind of guy. But Another, yeah. See, I'll, I'll go skiing or snowboard or whatever, but yeah. I want to go, I want to ride snowmobiles. Of course. So the other direction, we're an hour away once we get to Big Sky from Yellowstone. Oh. And I've always wanted to go to Yellowstone. God dang it. I'm, I am now jealous. <laughs> and I'm going to Yellowstone. Of course. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do when I get to Bozeman is the uh, grizzly bear encounter. Excuse me? Yeah, yep, exactly what you think it's <laughs> I feel like of all things that Gunnar Miller could die from, yeah. <laughs> it's a grizzly encounter. <laughs> it's a grizzly bear encounter. <laughs> when I meet my twin... And I'm like, hello, we're the same. <laughs> what if, what if it's one of like this? It, it is a smaller, gr- uh, like I was almost a like gorilla, grizzly, but it just has a face that's like <laughs> you, but a bear. <laughs> It'd be awesome. It'd be awesome. But yeah. So I think explain it's like, this. No, no, no. You can't skip over this. I'm, what is a grizzly encounter? So what I believe it is from the pictures I've seen is not a zoo, right? Because a zoo is obviously like they're captured and they're in their own little fake habitat the and it's not a safari like a safari is like you would drive in there and they have certain areas for them yeah to kind of be right i believe in this part of montana it is an area isolated with fencing that has like a stream and a cave and enough room to wander Enough room for multiple grizzlies. Multiple to be. grizzlies to wander okay. to also to like where they know where they're going to be at certain parts of the day. Like they just kind of go to certain spots. Yeah. And you get set in one of those areas in a safe way to encounter I was about to say, what's the safest way of encountering? Like, it's a not like I'm going to dap up a grizzly. <laughs> I'm I'm going to see the grizzly in his natural habitat i feel like that's as much as i'd want yeah is like <laughs> you can, grizzly you can stay about yeah. 20 more yards that way yeah. i will use binoculars yeah well no i mean like <laughs> as long as i know i will not get touched i would love to be like in a glass like where i could put my hand up and it could put its <laughs> hand up and i could be like just a moment we are one it's like a Brother Bear. Have yeah. you ever seen Brother Bear? Mm-mm. I recently rewatched it. It's one of those Disney animated movies from like the early 2000s that's just like, it's underrated. Yeah. It's like uh, Atlantis, Treasure okay. Planet. Right. It's, yeah, we it's talked kinda, about all that. Yeah, yeah. Like those movies are really good. Brother Bear is one of those that gets left behind okay. a lot of times. But uh, no, like Grizzlies, man. <laughs> I've dealt with one black bear ever. And it was kind of like 
happenstance that happened. Like you, like in the wild? Yeah, I encountered a black bear, but it was like it, it immediately ran off. But like being that close to one, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> even I can take a black bear. Like how close? Like where, set this scene. For so me. we were in a cabin. Um, Ooh. We, <laughs> this was. I've uh, always wanted to see a bear in a cabin. <laughs> no, I was in the cabin. Um, I was staying with uh with my youth group. We went up for like winter jam or whatever. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, up in uh Gatlinburg. Yeah. And our cabin was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> right. But we were. It, it was. It was a very nice cabin. I'm gonna say that. Yeah. However, it was out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> right. And although we had power and internet and all that stuff. We knew, like, th- there is more than likely a chance that we're going to see wild animals. Right. I went outside just to, like, chill out, be outside, listen to the stream that was nearby. Mm-hmm. And I look over, and between the trees, this was, like, near sundown, I see a black bear just waddling up. And it walks up to the stairs that I was sitting on. Um, How close are you to this bear? The stairs were like like fifteen feet wide. They're like big, big stairs. Okay. And uh, and yeah, it was within like maybe thirty, thirty to fifteen feet. Like it was pretty close. And it looked me right in the eyes, and I was just like, "Sup?" And I just waddled off. <laughs> but now grizzly. All that said, grizzlies are like what two, three times as big as black bears. A grizzly is the apex predator of the planet. Like you I know totally that, right? Believe that. No, yes. it is a, a grizzly. Pound for pound, is the apex pl- like predator on Earth on land. I will say this: I have been, I've always been fascinated with bears, just in general. Yeah. But the grizzly bear is like, if I could be any like zodiac sign that wasn't Leo. Yeah. I want to be a grizzly bear, man. Yeah. If you want to be a bear, <laughs> you want to be a grizzly. Um, that's or a polar all, bear. That's always been my saying. If you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly. Of course. Um, yeah. So, I mean, imagine. Like, imagine. Like, I don't know if something a bear goes up against and loses. No. Even like, in water. <laughs> yeah. Like, like everybody wants to uh, have the fantasy matchup of bear versus silverback gorilla. Like, grizzly versus silverback gorilla. Yeah. The grizzly would rip that silverback gorilla to shreds. So, here's Because the of thing. its claws and exactly. its teeth. Exactly. The bear, the grizzly is strong. Not the grizzly. The the gorilla is strong enough to maybe beat it up, Mm -hmm. but it's not coordinated enough to know like how to choke this bear out. Like (laughs) it has the strength to do it, but not the skills. Exactly. And (laughs) that reminds me of a meme I saw once. It was just like, if we're gonna just take gorillas at their natural strength and everything, yeah. But they don't, you know, like have a workout regimen. Imagine a silverback gorilla that works out and pumps iron. Yeah, it's called the rock. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing. Who would win? The rock <laughs> or a grizzly bear? <laughs> well, does the rock have a gun? No. Yeah, then the grizzly bear wins every time. <laughs> every time? Every time. I am a fan of the grizzly as well. So, I mean. Yeah. I'll, there's movies that are terrifying. On like The Revenant. The Revenant, yeah, but there's, and that's kind of based loosely on a true story. But um, there's another one. Oh, man, you need to look this up. It's, uh, this is going to kill me. So it's it's a true story. Okay. And it's about a couple that goes on this trip somewhere in the West. Not sure where, but they kayak out they get into this one spot and this guy's like hey your problem yeah this guy's like (laughs) i used to work here i know where we need to go like it's over here like one of those type things like don't trust your buddy that ever says that and uh they end up getting out somewhere and they get lost well then they end up having to like camp out for the night yeah and when they wake up in the morning there's a grizzly bear outside of their tent well then he smells them right and they have the bear spray like they the yeah, shows yeah. they have the bear spray. And then all of a sudden it gets real quiet and they're both inside their tent. Like, oh God. And then all of a sudden the most outrageous sound you've ever heard in a movie and like the tents getting attacked by the grizzly rip opens the tent, yanks the, the girl or no yanks the guy out, just rips him out, rips him to shreds. Just like eating him from the inside out, pulling him all around. Uh, 
And then here, and he's like spraying with bear spray, trying to tell the girl to, to run. She's in shock. Then here he comes again. And he's like coming in for the girl and hitting her with the bear spray or whatever. I just. And he just doesn't stop. He kills them both. There, There's no good ending like, to the movie. Like, that's just. I mm, Bears, what do you but do? I'm trying to think of the name of it. It, it was on Netflix for a while. But it. it I'll say a, this. Uh, the reason I'm into, like, I have a fascination with grizzly bears is uh, a book that I had to read for like el- elementary school or middle school. It was called touching spirit bear. Yeah. And it's literally just about a guy or a kid delinquent kid gets sent to an Island. as just like punishment. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's a delinquent. He needs to, he would either go to p- prison or he can go spend time on this Island. Yeah. Think about himself, collect himself, come back, hopefully be a better person. But there's a grizzly bear on this Island. Yeah. <laughs> And he gets mauled, like straight up. It, it like it, it's a harsh book for especially a sixth grader. Let me tell you something. I don't know of many stories that start with and a grizzly bear that end well. No, there's never like, hey, I met this pet grizzly bear and he was awesome. Like there's a movie, literally a documentary of like the man that lives with grizzlies. Oh yeah, and he gets m- mauled on camera. <laughs> Like yeah. and the audios out there of this man uh, getting eaten alive. There, there's a lot of things that like sh- send shivers down my spine, and I've been on the internet long enough that people dying is not one of them. Yeah. But when you like uh, like maulings or like people like in the moment mm. freaking out, mm-hmm. that always sh- sends shivers down my spine. Speaking of the internet and crazy videos, so the snowstorm happened this past week, right? Yeah. Did you see any of the videos of the wrecks in Dallas? Oh jeez, no. I did see a little bit of the uh, the Fort Worth wreck, though. Well, I guess that's what I was talking about. It's, oh, okay, right, outside, okay. it's right outside of Dallas. But so, um, yeah, there was like a 100 car pile up in Fort yeah. Worth. I was going to ask you if there was any trailers. None there. of my trailers involved, <laughs> but it, I mean, it obviously it messed up a lot of that. Oh yeah, and that was what we woke up to on Monday. Like that Jeez. was the deal. So people literally trying to go to work Monday early Monday morning didn't know the black ice everywhere yeah. because they're from Texas and there's not you black ice yeah. in Texas. I'm was, surprised we didn't get any here. We we had a few. We reps, were right but. on the line. We were like, like like it was like the safe zone was right in Chattanooga and then everything yeah. else this way was frozen. It was all pink. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's something I saw. In, I think it was Nashville. It was like pink, 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 pink to the left. Yeah, and then to the right it was just clear. Yeah, but Nothing. what was crazy is these wrecks are like. It started out with, like, it showed the beginning of it. It was like uh, one car spin out of control. Oh, well, yeah. The next car spins out of control, hits that car. Next car spins out of control, hits that car. Now there's three cars lined up on the interstate. Here comes semi-truck. <laughs> Destroys all three. Jackknifes. Turns sideways. Jeez. Next car hits. Boom. Next car hits. Boom. Next car hits. Boom. Now there's three cars piled up on the jackknife semi-truck. Here comes another semi-truck. 80 miles per hour trying to hit his brakes. Jesus. Doesn't hit anything. Boom! Hits this truck from behind. The truck does a front flip. Good lord! And it was stopped dead still. Did a front flip, landed on top of another semi truck, and cars just keep hitting and keep hitting and keep hitting. I mean, that's yeah. That and what's it's, crazy? It's is, like a train wreck. And there's people on the other side of videoing. And it's like, I mean, what? Why are you videoing? Well, because what else are you going to do? Get out there and exactly. stop the semi truck? What are you going to do? Yeah, video and get this to the news. But um, like that side of the road wasn't frozen. Which is weird. That's, that is weird. It was only that one spot on the other side of the road that caused that Which, whole I mean, that's disaster. Freaking, freaking nature. I mean, like that. Yeah. You can't really attribute that to anything. All you right. Are. How long have we been talking? An hour nine. An hour nine. <laughs> yeah. We. This is a good episode. It was a good episode. Uh, I'm, I'm evidently am going to have to do a solo episode next week. Um. Yeah, that's where I was getting to that. <laughs> um. Yeah, you can do the show. You can do the show however you want to do it. We'll figure it out. Um. The following week, oh, we I'm going to say we 75% have a guest. <gasps> I'll say that. Finally. Um, I've, I've, I've talked to him on uh, direct messages on Facebook. We have, uh, I've asked him. He has said yes. I've told him what day. He has said yes. Cool. So I'm assuming all that's left to do is for him to walk in this door. He doesn't live too far. He is the real nature boy. Oh my gosh. Paul Lee. Oh my gosh. Woo. For so, us. For us. Yeah, for he us. told me, uh, he told me, he said, happy, happy belated birthday. Woo. <laughs> 
And I replied back with, let's get you on this show. <laughs> All right. So the first Thursday of March. Good Lord. Episode 59. I can't believe it's happening. Chat with Gunner. Gosh darn it. Why wasn't it episode 69? I know. <laughs> Will most likely be the most viewed and listened to Chat with Gunner show. As it should be. <laughs> as it should be. Because Mr. Paul Lee. Man. Is not only <laughs> is not only a pro wrestler, which we can talk about, and I want to talk all about how he got into it and how he uh, became the Nature Boy and his interactions with Flair. I, I tell this you this: I, I'm going to tell you this right now. You need to hone in on your Joe Rogan impression, and this needs to be like a three hour episode. Yeah, this I'm needs ready. to be the newest, longest episode. And then what I'm going to do is get him to answer some questions about his political views, which he's a very strong conservative, so he's going to fit fit in. (laughs) And I want to know all about the behind the scenes of him running for mayor. I remember um, that. Multiple times. The problem with the the backlash with the first time about the the address not matching up. Um, It's going to be like having our own small town Trump. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be. Listen, dude. And I'm going to, and I'm going to ask like, why he has heat with so many people, but also like the people he doesn't have heat with, why those people love him so much. Like, you know, he's a very like polarizing figure yeah. in North Georgia, it's Chattanooga, so if you know who he is. Like, I mean, I mean, most people know of the guy that quote unquote walks around looking like Ric Flair. Like exactly. you've heard, like you've heard that if you're in this area, you've heard that. Um, so I'm excited to have him on. I think we're going to get along. I think we're going to it's become be great. like really good friends. I, I don't. I don't necessarily know how the episode will go. Like it may struggle here and there, but I feel like this is going to be one of the best episodes. Yeah, this I'm is going, this is going to be my first Rogan show. It better be. Like I'm going to bring my Rogan game. Good. You yeah. need to. You like, need to look at all those videos. Just like how to be Rogan. Oh, I, I've got a pretty good <laughs> idea. So, so what Rogan does. And I'm pretty sure he the mirror uh, technique. He does the this thing where he starts the conversation prior to the show starting. Oh yeah. In the room though, he doesn't really talk to them until they get into the room. Gets the conversation going, gets to a laugh, to a mutual spot. Jamie start the show, starts the show, and then they he kind of talks about what they were talking about without saying it, so the other person has to mention something they were just talking about exactly that they have mutual ground on. They go off on a tangent right there. And then Joe somehow comes back within 10 to 15 minutes of the reason why he actually had that person on the show, whether <laughs> it's a, a topic or a subject or uh, if they're an athlete, like a question that he wants to get into like their career. You need, you're going to write someday the Joe Rogan playbook. The, tell me that's <laughs> not the Joe Rogan playbook. I mean, that is. That, that's, every Joe, that's every main Joe Rogan show. I want here, – here's the thing. 2021 is our year. Knock on wood. I want by the end of 2029. So before 2030. Before you're 40. Or yeah, within the next 10 years. Let's just say that. I want to be on Joe Rogan. <laughs> Dude, so I was looking at uh that's funny you say that. I was uh <laughs> I was looking at uh real estate in Austin. Yeah. So Rogan lives in 2189. Okay, listen. <laughs> no, it, it, you go on the internet and look at it. I mean, it's not like you just type in his Texas mansion. So it's like 2189, all of Chester Lane. <laughs> You're still toxic, man. Uh, Jesus. In um in Austin, Texas, right? Beautiful home. Beautiful of home. Uh, right there off of uh, uh, the Colorado River. Yeah, yeah. Lake Texas. Um. But I was looking at houses around his houses. You know, his house is like fourteen million, <laughs> and you got some houses that are like you know three, four, five million that are out there on the yeah. lake. But then you go down the road a little bit, where you're still in his neighborhood. <laughs> this is. <laughs> you're looking at like very nice houses on roads that he will have to travel at some <laughs> point to get to where he wants to get to in Austin, for. Anywhere from three hundred and fifty to six hundred thousand dollars. Wow, which is very well in my range. Yeah, holy cow. Yeah, and Texas is very 
similar to Tennessee when it comes to cost of living and taxes. I, I've heard that, yes. So that's why there's not really a big issue there. Yeah. So people from California are making, a, or they're getting a raise if they come to Texas. Oh, yeah. If I was to go to Texas, work remotely, and do my job from Tennessee, It'd nothing changes. Yeah. Yeah. So I was looking at that, and I was like, huh, I wonder, like, at what point would us two meatheads run into each other and be like, we're probably friends. Like, I know Brendan Schaub's his friend, right? <laughs> and, like, uh, Brian Callen's his friend, Eddie Bravo. And I, I've watched all these shows, and I feel like I'm already friends with them. So, like. Here's the, here's the thing. Be careful with that. There, why? There, there, is, there is, like, a lot of people that think that they know people. Because That's true. Listen to podcast. That's true. That, there's something to that. You're, you're, you already sound crazy. I sound a little crazy. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm also not one of those people that would like walk up and ask for a picture if he was eating with his family. Like I'm not a creep. Well, no. But like, and I wouldn't be like, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, can I get a picture? Hey, I'm going to stand outside your house and just wait for you to drive out. No. Like if I ran into him Listen, at the supermarket. what you need to do, what you need to do is Marcus turns how old next year? He's six. Or this year? He'll be six, six? next year. Or this year, yeah. It's the perfect age for a dog. You need to get a golden retriever. Yeah, take it to the dog park and start <laughs> running around a little bit. Buy a house in Austin. Yeah. This is the long con, yeah. all right? Yeah. You grow, you grow up with this. Great show, retriever. by the way. Imposters. Have you seen it? No. It's on Netflix, two seasons. It's fantastic. The Bravo channel did it. Okay. It's fantastic. Very well done. I'll look it up. Yeah, look it up. It's good. All right. We've been talking we gotta too get long. out of here. <laughs> um, so Ethan's got the show next week. Any ideas? I have no ideas. You should throw me some. Um, we'll we'll talk about it. See what we can Figure come up out. with, and uh, then the, the following week, fingers crossed, we get Paul Lee in studio. I guess we can do Zoom, but no, I really want him. I want in him studio. in studio. I if he's in not studio. in studio, uh, we'll we, wait. We should wait. Yeah. So. <laughs> He t- I, I told him I said, "Hey man, I'm in I'm in Colorado. I'm not Colorado. I'm in Montana uh, next week. So maybe we can do the first week of March." He goes, "Great. Let's do Thursday, the first week of March, because I'm in El Salvador wrestling. Good lord, and that'll fill my schedule." And I was like, "Fantastic, cool. dude. Works with me." All right. So next week we got Ethan episode 59. We got the real nature boy, Paul Lee. And then, that's it. We don't have any plans after that? No plans after that. All right. I don't really want too many guests this year. Um, I mean, we have strong episodes alone. So, I mean. I, listen, man. There, there's nothing that no one else can say that I don't want to say better myself. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, unless it's Paul Lee. I will give Paul Lee two hours of my time. So, three. We yeah, need to do. Three. It needs to be a Joe Rogan episode. It, needs to be a Joe Rogan it just episode. needs to be. We'll get him some. We'll get him some. We'll get some whiskey. We'll get some oh, whiskey gosh. in here. And then get him, oh, get no. him ready to roll. No. All right, guys. So, get ready for Ethan next week. I get ready for me and Paul Lee the following week. Go to YouTube or whatever way you're listening to this podcast subscribe like leave a review whatever you can do and uh, we really appreciate it we're gonna get to 100 reviews this year we're gonna get 105 star reviews we need to get some more quality listeners and get those quality listeners to tell 10 more quality listeners to do the same thing um naturally listen buzzsprout doesn't lie we people are listening um youtube does not get hardly any hits but m- listen let me tell you this there's a market for YouTube. We're not it yet. Um, I believe that the audio, though, is definitely doing fairly well. I mean, who wants to look at Connor Miller for an hour and a half? I mean, I'm sure some people are probably <laughs> some people are probably like mute it and just walk, stare at me. Yeah. You know. Um, then you got some people that probably just want to listen, and not look at me. So, yeah. You know, it, it goes with, it goes without saying. Um, Paul Lee in studio in two weeks. Woo! 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 <laughs> Don't. Boo me, just woo me. Woo! Woo. Alright, we'll see y'all next time.